A reading from the Book of Kings. The elders of Israel and all the leaders of the tribes, the princes and the ancestral house of the children of Israel, came to King Solomon in Jerusalem to bring up the Ark of the Lord's Covenant from the city of David, which is Zion. All the people of Israel assembled before King Solomon during the festival in the month of Ethanim, the seventh month. When all the elders of Israel had arrived, the priests took up the ark. They carried the ark of the Lord and the meeting tent with all the sacred vessels that were in the tent. The priest and the Levites carried them. King Solomon and the entire community of Israel, present for the occasion, sacrificed before the ark sheep and oxen, too many to number or count. The priest brought the ark of the covenant of the Lord to its place between the, beneath the wings of the cherubim in the sanctuary, the holy of holies of the temple. The cherubim had their wings spread out over the place of the ark, sheltering the ark and its poles from above. There was nothing in the ark but the two stone tablets, which Moses had put there at Horeb, when the Lord made a covenant with the children of Israel at their departure from the land of Egypt. When the priests left the holy place, the cloud filled the temple of the Lord so that the priests could no longer minister because of the cloud, since the Lord's glory had filled the temple of the Lord. Then Solomon said, the Lord intends to dwell in the dark cloud. I have truly built you a princely house, a dwelling where you may abide forever. The word of the Lord. The Lord, go up to the place of your rest. Lord. Behold, we heard of it in Ephrathah. We found it in the fields of Jah. Let us enter into his dwelling. Let us worship at his footstool. Lord, go up to the place of your rest. Advance, O Lord, to your resting place, you and the ark of your majesty. May your priest be clothed with justice, let your faithful one shout merrily for joy. For the sake of David, your servant, reject not the plea of your anointed. Alleluia, alleluia. Jesus preached the gospel of the kingdom and cured every disease among the people. The Lord be with you. It's a reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. After making the crossing to the other side of the sea, Jesus and his disciples came to land at Gennesareth and tied up there. As they were leaving the boat, people immediately recognized him. They scurried about the surrounding country and began to bring in the sick on mats to wherever they heard he was. 
Whatever villages or towns or countryside he entered, they laid the sick in the marketplaces and begged him that they might touch only the tassel on his cloak, and as many as touched it were healed. The Gospel of the Lord. So all these people, the, the gospel today, what, is that the voice of my conscience? I heard something. Uh, uh, the people today it describes as scurrying about uh, it, like mice or cockroaches or something. That's what I think of when I think of scurrying. But they're excited uh, because they've heard uh, that Jesus is, is there. His reputation obviously precedes him. Uh, he's, this is, you know, chapter uh, six of Mark's gospel. So there's been plenty of opportunities already walking on water, uh, feeding 5,000 uh, with virtually nothing, uh, raising people who have died uh, back to th on their feet. All of these things, people know about them. And so they bring their loved ones uh, who are so sick that they're laying on these mats. They place them in his path so that he can, when, they pass, when he passes by, they can maybe reach out and just touch, it says, the tassels of his cloak. I don't know about you, uh, if you've ever been seriously sick, hope not, hope you're not today, but it's easy when you're sick, especially maybe after a while, to become a little bit fatalistic, to resign oneself that this is, this is the way it's gonna be from now on. Uh, I define myself as the person with this cancer, this heart problem, this uh, whatever, whatever the issue might be. But these people uh, in the gospel story, they don't have that attitude. Uh, they, the only thing they seem to be able to think about is being close to Jesus. And they, when he comes near, they reach out to be able to touch even just the tassel of his cloak. And it says, everyone who does so was healed. Uh, that we could learn the lesson uh, to not, you know, give in to the current situation, to always... Uh, be hopeful, always wanting to reach out. What's the old uh, Bell telephone ad? Uh, reach out and touch someone. Uh, this is the Jesus walking by. Of course, we would want to reach out and touch him uh, because it's not just uh, his tassels we touch, uh, it's, it's him. Uh, he's the source of, of new life and of healing. Uh, the people don't go away disappointed. They actually restored, it says, are healed. Amazing how their life must have changed that day. We don't know the follow-up stories, of course. It's not recorded in the gospel, but we can imagine because the church grew like wildfire uh, after the Pentecost event, uh, after the resurrection. Uh, things took off so uh, amazing, like, uh, uh, you know, a wildfire, really. Uh, this is our legacy, that Jesus comes near. All that's required, really, is that people like us uh, just reach out, and we never go away disappointed. This is Jesus who comes near us, especially in our weakest moments, and presents us with an opportunity to reach out, to be healed, and to be given new life. I invite you to stand with me, then, as we are aware of his presence here, and so we place our prayers and needs again in his hands. So we do think of our family and friends today, our neighbors, members of the parish, most especially those who are sick or in trouble, we pray to the Lord. And again, we continue to pray for an end to this war in Ukraine, now in Israel too, we pray to the Lord. Loving God, you challenge, call us to reach out every day we ask for the grace to do so, and we ask all of our prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness, who have received the bread, we offer you fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It'll become for us the bread of life. And blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness, who have received the wine, we offer you fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It'll become our spiritual drink. Pray, my friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to Almighty God. May the offerings we bring in celebration of St. Agatha win your gracious acceptance, O Lord, just as the struggle of her suffering and passion was pleasing to you through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For the blood of your blessed martyr, Agatha, poured out like Christ to glorify your name, shows forth your marvelous works, by which in our weakness you perfect your power, and on the feeble bestow strength to bear you witness through Christ our Lord. And so with the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth and before your majesty without end, we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them. They may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. Once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Bernard, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, especially today we're remembering James uh, Jungman. And all who've died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Of course, the very same Jesus who healed in the gospel today, uh, in another place, taught his disciples how to pray. We have his very prayer, of course, and so we can say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, 
that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, you who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let's turn to one another then and offer some sign of God's peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. And let us pray. Renewed by partaking of this divine gift, we pray, O Lord our God, that by the example of Saint Agatha, bearing in our body the death of Jesus, we may strive to hold fast to you alone through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you today, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Our Mass is ended. Let us go in peace.